What is guys? This is Averos and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the subjects that you guys will be studying in semester 5 UI Camp Sha'alam. So I have a list here with me and I'll be going through each of the subjects. I'll also be, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the notes for semester 5 in the description box below as well as the lesson plan which are the chapters that you'll be studying in each of the respective subjects and without further ado, let's jump right in into the first subject and that is BMU 556. So BMU 556 is Malay for law language, Malay language for law too. And in that subject, all you will be doing is that you'll be translating from English to Malay. And you'll be getting a lot of assignments just that. So each assignment is around 10%. So 10% is one script, an English script, usually a legal news, and you have to translate it into Malay. And that's just about it. And the last remaining assignment is just group work and individual work, which is around, I think, around 30%. The next subject or next list is Law 428 which is insurance law and insurance law is basically very very similar to contract law because insurance law is indeed a type of consideration or type of contract where you enter into a policy with the insurance company for you to get different types of services and types of insurance. So in this subject, you'll, they'll be teaching you who are the intermediaries, how do you form an insurance, how can you make claims, are you a person who could get the claims on your insurance, and yada yada yada. Coming up next is Law 510, which is international law. International law is a subject that, you, that you've already learned in UITM Denkil. You've learned about how does a country exist the Montevideo Convention, such as the statehood and recognition, such as territory, defined, yeah, defined territory, population, and government, and co-enter relations. There's uh, additional things that you have to learn in international law apart from statehood and recognition. For example, to see whether can you sue another country at a international court? How do you see that a country is responsible for your act, for your acts? How does a diplomat or some ambassador from a country get Im immunity or some sort of jurisdiction. So those are some of the things that you'll be learning in International Law 1. Afterwards, we have Law 515, which is Honors Project Paper. This is a continuation from last semester's subject where you have to write a proposal for any type of topic. But for this semester, you have to complete the whole Honors, honors Project Paper, the whole complete set. And personally for me, I wrote on intangible cultural heritage. That's an interesting topic that I believe that's really interesting. I got the chance to go to Kuala Lumpur at Bangana al Usama to the National Heritage Department and, and distributed interview papers and questionnaires. Even though there were some things that I wasn't satisfied about, but at least we managed to complete our honors project paper for ICH. Next up, we have Law 517, which is industrial training. This subject is your basically your internship. If you've done it last semester, you don't have to take it this semester because um, even though you've done it last semester, but you have to at least you have to still register for this course this semester. Why? Because our faculty allows our students to take it in either semester four or five. In semester four, you don't have to register the course, but in semester five, you have to register the course. If you take internship this semester in semester five, then you also have to register. So that's how it operates. That's how it works for internship. And yeah, I've also made a video about internship. You can check it out in my on my channel about videos regarding internship. Afterwards, we have Law 531, which is Jurisprudence 1. Jurisprudence is also a subject that you've already learned in UIT and Denkville or Asasi. You'll be learning something like positivism, morality, utilitarianism, libertarianism, liberalism, and all those sorts of philosophies, the naturalist view, whether a law is a law, an unjust law, it has to be obeyed or not, whether a command from God. It is it's a very abstract topic and it involves a lot of thinking. It's really it has a lot of jargons, it involves a lot of command um, complicated sem semantics, sophisticated words and vocabularies. So it, for some people think that it's a very difficult subject because of the high language that it uses and you know and it involves a lot of thinking processes. But my advice is that learning your experience can actually be fun if you can really have the feeling or the vibe or you can actually grasp the actual meaning behind your experience because it involves our lives from our own actions and conduct. So I think jurisprudence is one of my best favorite subjects for this semester and I highly recommend you guys learn it as best you could. Next is Law 604 which is the Law of Association and this subject involves a lot of 
matters really to forming a partnership, forming a company. So if a partner does something wrong, then other partners will be liable. Partnership, in one example that I can show you about a partnership is a law firm. So a law firm is actually a partnership and I just knew about that. I mean, I don't know if I'm too dumb to only realize that now, but yeah, forming a partnership and forming a firm are the same thing. And companies, companies, there are two types, which is public and private. So that's why you can see, for example, a company ending with Burhat and then a company ending with Sundirian Burhat, which is public and private. Both company has their own functions, has their own unique traits. And we'll be talking about bluffing the corporate field, how do we amend the constitution, all those stuff will be learned in law of association. And finally, the final subject you'll be learning in semester five will be law 605, which is Islamic family law. Yes, Islamic. It's not the civil law under the, I think it's the Re Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act, but no, you'll be learning the Islamic version. You'll be learning how to divorce, how to get married, what are the claims of the wife after getting a divorce, and how do you determine if that person has the custody or hadana over the children. So these are the things that you'll be learning in Islamic family law, and this will be a really nice subject if you want to pursue Sharia law after you graduate law degree, maybe a double course with civil and Islamic law in your respective universities and I heard that practicing Sharia law is actually really easy money because every day people are going to get married, people are going to get divorced and people will actually want to get their ancillary claims. To end this video, I have three tips or advice that I want to share with you guys which I've realized for this semester and perhaps the last few semesters and that coming at number one is always try your best. Even though you are very doubtful or you're not confident about yourself and the answers that you do in your tests, in your assignments, in the final exams, but always give your best shot. And coming at number two, even though you've done your best, take note that you're not perfect. We are bound to make mistakes. Of course, even though we do our best, there's going to be some miscalculations and some mistakes there. And finally, coming at number three is that always finding inner peace and finding time for self and self-care. Especially in law school, I'm, don't, I'm not sure for other people, but personally for me and life in the future, we are gonna be, and in this modern era, we tend to live in isolation. We live by ourselves. We don't even know what other people are doing, even the people that live in our own houses. So for that matter, maybe we don't have other people to look, you know, to, to, we don't have someone to express our feelings to. So maybe as a law student and as a university student and college student and, and a person living in this millennial era, I think it's important for us to have self-care and reassure itself and love ourselves because there's no, no other people can do that for us unless we do it for ourselves. So that's my only tip and advice for this video and I want to say thank you guys for so much for tuning in and to check out what are the subjects that we'll be learning in semester 5. And until then, see you guys next time and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day.